This turned out to be a nice little rounding hammer. I started with five inches of two inch diameter mystery steel. It's something I've used before. Hardens in water, but doesn't get real hard. The starting weight was two pounds, 10 ounces. The finished head weight was two pounds, five ounces. But with a handle, it's back to two pounds, 10 ounces. So it's about a two and a half pound hammer, a little over a kilogram. Now, since this started off as a piece of round bar and I find it much easier to get an accurate eye and square bar, 
First step, of course, was to square this up under the power hammer. And then because it kind of pooches out at the end as you do that under the power hammer, I wanted to bring those ends even so I didn't have to grind off any more material than absolutely necessary. When I did the layout for the eye, I wanted to make sure that it was in line so I actually used the punch I would use later under the power hammer, which is a little bit oblong. It's kind of a Brian Brazil style punch with a little bit of a point on it. And that way I could make sure this was in the right line and index this in that little bit of a starting slot I did by hand. And that made life a lot easier under the power hammer. And the eye ended up quite nice. Of course, coal dust was used to prevent the punch from sticking. I also at times use a punch lube from Quick and Dirty Tool Works. Just whatever works out for you. Sometimes it's a combination of both. Now when it came to the fullers, I was going to try and do this all under the power hammer with a spring fuller, but the spring fuller was kind of squirrely and didn't want to really maintain alignment. And I could tell things were going to be kind of crooked and not the way I wanted it. So I went ahead and put fullering dies in the hydraulic press, did it under the hydraulic press. That worked real well. And if you're making a lot of hammers, a hydraulic press with special dies for each step is really useful. I found I don't really like punching eyes under the hydraulic press. I like the control under the power hammer better because it takes a little longer and you can stop between blows much easier than with the press, which usually by the time you realize you're off a little bit, it's too late to fix it. Then as we drifted the eye, you'll notice that I went under the little giant power hammer to work these ears or the cheeks of the hammer down and that starts them spreading, but unfortunately the dies would hit the two faces. So ultimately, I ended up going back to the anvil and just working over the square horn of the anvil with the drift in place. The drift, by the way, is just a cast ductile iron drift. I think Paytool is the source for these now. Whoever used to make them now sold that operation to Paytool. So if you're looking for one of these, that's where I'd go look for one. And then as the hammer gets close to finish, it's kind of going back and forth between some of these steps, back to the power hammer to refine the profile of the faces and get this one square and this one round, back into the hydraulic press to clean up the fullers a little bit, and a little bit more drifting just to make sure the eye hasn't been squished at all. And that's kind of the last forging step I like to do is a final drift to make sure I've got a nice hourglass shaped eye. Ground it down to a 220 grit finish, then I hardened it, quenching in water. Finished it all off with a hickory handle, little coat of oil. I'm going to keep this in the shop and use it. My other rounding hammers are either a lot smaller or a lot bigger. I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. That doesn't cost you anything. That just means you're more likely to know when I make new videos. I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.